Hi, I'm Stephen Drill. I've been working on a podcast about bikies in Australia for the past eight months. It's called Bikies Inc. and it's out now. I'm Andrew Rule, and I've been working in the field of crime for longer than I care to say. Probably longer than I've been alive? Longer than you've been alive is not quite right, yeah. probably, although you, you, you are in your 40s. I, I just now. Well, I have been working longer than you've been alive, <laughs> sadly. Well, most, not always in crime. Well, we sort of have a s different perspectives on it. Like, what I've been speaking to with police across the country the past sort of eight months is they're saying that bikies have changed and they've become a bigger business and, and much more organised than they were in, say, the 80s and 90s. Have you noticed I think that that's change? true. I can remember meeting uh, one of the early Finks in the 70s in, in Sale, Victoria, in the 70s. They just started up, I think, up the coast somewhere or around... Um, you know, Lithgow or something like that mm -hmm. up there. And I ran into this guy who had been w with them uh, in sale and he told me a bit about the Finks. And at that stage, they were just sort of dirty, mean, nasty, low-down things who, who reveled in, you know, grease and dirt and grime and doing disgusting stuff, basically. And they've evolved into these, over decades, into these Nike bikies who are really slick, organised crime figures. Big difference. It is a big change, and what's huge now is the money that's been going through. We, we, uh, for the podcast, we found out that bikers are making eight million dollars a day out of illegal drugs in Australia, and they're only a fraction of the market. Yeah, well, I mean, one time in the bad old days, uh, they were, you know, basically um, labourers and tradesmen who loved motorbikes and fighting and drinking and tattoos or whatever. And now, highly organised, making all that money out of you know, really big time contraband, well, mainly drugs, well, but also guns and other stuff. But also it just shows how wealthy Australia is and I don't think people quite realise how you know, much money is in this country. We've got a, an economy about the size of Russia's yeah. and we have 25 million people yes. and they've got 130 or 160 million yeah. people. So yeah. it, we, we've got a lot of cash and a lot of people here will pay big money for drugs. So we're actually creating the, the, the market for the bikies to, to exploit. Yeah, by world standards, we are a target market because how leisure class is willing to pay big money for what we call the party drugs. Well, and, co coke can be like up to $400 a gram in Sydney. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of money for a night. And Much cheaper overseas. You've been in London. I have, have been in London. So I, you'd understand. It, it, it's a lot cheaper in London and a lot of different things. Are, are, you know, Ecstasy is the price of a beer in London. It's, it's quite um, surprising. Whereas T-bone steak, not so much. T-bone steak is no, you, no. You're not really eating steak. And when you do get some from the supermarket, they're about this thick. Yes. Uh, it, it's not That's ideal. But uh, so how have you seen the last few months in Sydney? We've had an underworld yep. war. Um, now Big one. It's, it's the Alamedine and the Hamzy families yep. that have been blamed to be at the centre of that. Yeah. In Melbourne, you wrote extensively about the Underbelly series. You actually created the Underbelly well, series. Co-wrote co 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 with, with John Sylvester. Yeah, uh, but those books really delved deep into the Melbourne under, Underworld War, which yeah. ran for about a decade. Roughly. Um, some would suggest that about 1998 is roughly the start and that the death of Mario Condello in 2006 was about the end. But they're, they're very rough parameters. And in that time, you know, 28 or 30 people were killed who you would call part of that underworld war. Some of them, not all of them, were, were a direct uh, part of a direct vendetta. Most of them, though, were part of a vendetta between two warring groups. So it became and, about uh, ego. Ego. And uh, ego as well as money, yeah. It starts out with money and then it becomes ego and and just bloodlust and revenge. Well, and that's one of the suggestions in Sydney. It was about a $400,000 drug which is dispute, which is then start. No, it's kind of like a tip on the bar at the end of the night, really, when they're Pretty. turning over hundreds of millions of dollars. It's, it's surprising. Yeah, ego, honour, pride, all those words, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. but once you have one murder and say, you know, so your relative's murdered, it will be, be broader in that term, how do you stop? I mean, what actually stopped the Melbourne Underworld War? I don't want to be flip about this, but I, I'd suggest that uh, two things. One is deaths. People were shot. The main players were shot or locked up. Um, and the, the, the more careful operators who, who didn't get themselves shot sort of dropped out and lived a safer life, some of them, and retired from the field. But the police did a big, good job, uh, Purana, uh, of 
catch, they took a while to catch up with the crooks, but when they did, they did a great job and they locked up a lot of them. And the crooks did a good job of killing each other. So those two things sort of brought it to a, a natural close. Well, in Sydney, it's been about 13 murders in 18 yep. months. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's pretty that, serious. It is serious. And we've had uh, and about not over yet. a few months where we've, we've had sort of no, no shootings. I mean, the last yeah. one was at, at, a, at a gym, for goodness sake. And yeah. there's also been one uh, at a gym next to a childcare centre where yeah. it was lucky a child wasn't killed. Unbelievable. Um, this is a great danger. It's people often, you know, citizens often say, oh, it's all right, they just kill each other. Oh, yeah, that's all very well. But the reality is, you know, and you've been doing this more than anyone, as you know, the reality is that guns get, you know, shots are sprayed around. They can hit anyone. Well, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. It's good to get an idea of, you know, what may be happening in Sydney and what's happening down here. And um, if anyone wants to find out a bit more, jump on the Bikies Inc podcast. It's Bikies Inc, bikiesinc.com.au.